Divine Set 3 brought us support for a bunch of different encounter ride lines dating back to DBT-08. And the one I'm going to be talking about in today's video is Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom. This deck profile will be broken down into five parts, first of which will be going over the game plan of this deck, then transitioning into the deck list for the second part, third part will be a mulligan guide, fourth part will be alternate cards that you could run in this list, and the final part will be just discussing the deck into this current format. Starting off with the game plan of the deck, on turn two we really just want to create three attacks, usually miss the arc habitat if we have it, to dig for more pieces to set that up. And usually we swing rear guard, vanguard, and then rear guard after that, really just trying to push that damage again. Getting into our grade three turn, we're riding Maelstrom and be able to use Algo's effect to dig for more Aqua Force or Teal Dragons. The common cards to pull are Wheel Self, we don't have it, Title Self, we also don't have it, and then of course our Inlet Pulse Dragon. We want to call as many of those as we possibly can, and we can use, always use Judgment Maelstrom to call one back from Drop that we discarded for Ride Deck early on. Then from there, we're just creating the four attacks to get the Maelstrom effect, proc the Inlet Pulse effect, just maximizing on our draw power to dig for more pieces to set up for that big turn four kill. Speaking of turn four, so we start we start with the Persona Ride, and then from there we want to assemble Tidal Assault, Wheel Assault, get out the Inlet Pulse from Soul so it can attack twice with the Vanguard skill, Full Strike Brave Shooter behind the Inlet Pulse, really can go behind any, but that's more optimal I found, and then the Tideline Dragon using Tideline's effect to give usually the second attacker or the title assault the restand but really you just want to give it to a restander so if you have both i usually prefer title assault and here we're just trying to get in those seven attacks just pressure with as many as we can usually as soon as we reach our fourth attack i like to swing vanguard just so if we check triggers we can use those to pressure with our latter three attacks and really we're just hoping these seven attacks beat down the opponent and that's that Starting with the ride deck, of course, we've got Maelstrom up at the top of the deck, then Algos as the grade two, Theo's the grade one, and Officer Cadet Eric as the grade zero. You can really run whatever grade zero that you want. I just chose to be thematic. Theo searches out our Blue Storm Armada, which is a key card for this deck. Algos lets us check top seven road upon by Maelstrom to try to find Aquaforce or a Tear Dragon. This is a really great effect because this deck is very peace reliant, so a way to dig through the deck and find those pieces is much appreciated. Moving over to the main deck, I'm first going to start with the key cards. First of which is our Persona Ride copies. So we've got three copies of, of course, Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom and one Gradius Gradalay here. So Persona Ride is very key for this deck as one thing that the multi-attack really needs to help bolster it is power. And Persona Ride is the best way to get at that because all those attacks will be bolstered by that Persona Ride because the attacks are only coming from the front row. So definitely wanted to max on this one. Even if it means giving up a turn setting the Blue Storm Armada, the power is just way more worth it. Uh, for what this deck is trying to accomplish. Because if you're not Persona Riding on turn four, this deck isn't doing what it wants to do. Speaking of Blue Storm Armadas, we run two copies of the one that we've got, the Judgment Maelstrom. This is a great utility card, being able to call back an Aquaforce or Tear Dragon from the drop lets us recur pieces. And that has two functions. One, it gives us more flexibility with the discard for our ride deck, and also helps us recur pieces that maybe were retired by our opponent's card effects that we haven't necessarily drawn into another copy of. The power is also a nice bonus just to bolster our multi-attack. But why only run two copies of it's such a great card? And that's because it's a grade three set order and this deck isn't trying to go that long. So really, we don't need multiple copies. Our ride deck searches out us one. I wanted to run the second copy so we still get the search in case we draw into it, damage check it, and also for our turn four, if we don't need to use the Gradius Gradale, if we can just hard draw into the second one, that's great. This is a great utility card for that reason, but I don't think this deck needs any more than two copies. Continue with the grade three key cards, we've got Blue Storm, sorry, Blue Artillery Dragon, Inlet Pulse Dragon. It's just here, of course, for that second effect to put Self to Soul and draw a card. This is great for this deck that is trying to push and damage, but also needs to dig for pieces because this card can be called down, get that attack, we just shove it to Soul, draw a card, and this also pairs greatly with Maelstrom's first effect, that multi-attack effect, since you do have to put it back into Soul at the end of turn, well, this card already does that and also refunds that discard cost. So really just the best target for that. And really, we want to max this card out because we definitely want to see one on turn four. This deck really isn't doing what it wants to do if it isn't finding this on the first grade three turn or before that. And uh, any other additional copies just means we're farming up even more cards on that first grade three turn, meaning we have more ways to dig for pieces, shield value, you name it. This card's also great because we can discard it for ride deck and then bring it back with the Judgment Maelstrom. Next key card gained to the grade twos is Title Assault. This is just a real easy multi-attack because at the end of battle they attack, if it's the second battle that turn or more and you have a stand Maelstrom Vanguard, you can Carabas one to stand this unit. Really easy to enable Maelstrom's effect, Inlet Pulse's effect, and just gets that second attack or additional attack in contributing to our seven attack combo on our Persona Ride turns. The first effect can sometimes come up, like if you're trying to kill the opponent, there's no reason not to, and you have excess soul, there's no reason not to use this effect, but generally speaking, we've got better soul blast users I want to conserve our soul for. Also, I'm not going to say this for every four of, but the reason that cards in this deck are at a four of, if I don't give an explanation, is because it is a key piece, therefore we want to see it, and we especially want to see it if they are getting removed, so thus we want to maximize the number of copies we have access to. 
Next up, we've got the Flow Strike Brave Shooter. So this is another attack extender. This time, just being able to swap from the back row for the cost of a counterblast. This one's also nice over uh, compared to the Tidal Assault because it inherently gains power through its first effect, gaining 5k for each Blue Storm Armada in your order zone. So we'll always have the one because we search it out with the grade one. And if we find the second one, it's plus 10k. Most of the time, it's just plus 5k. It's just a really solid attacker to further extend and can work as soon as your first grade three turn in the event we don't find, say, a Tidal Assault or the next card we discuss. Our final attack extender for the deck is the Wheel Assault. This is the most resource efficient one, only costing a Soul Blast to just swap two rear guards between different uh, circles. This one does require us more resources on board because, of course, it needs to boost something, and then you need to have two other cards to swap, so you need at least three other cards in addition to it. But the payoff then is that it's just cost a Soul Blast, and this is one of our better uses of Soul Blast. So as you can see here with all those different multi-attackers and probably with the beginning wheel from this video, the real goal is to have a Wheel Assault on board, have it boosting a title salt, and then we call something out with Maelstrom's effect, and then have the Flow Strike Brave Shooter behind our Vanguard or that other rear guard. So then that's how we get to up to those seven attacks with the most ideal board state. This also is great in the on the turn three, because again, it's just more resource efficient and saves our crown boss for our big combo. Now, if there's one thing you've seen these units not doing, and that is gaining much power, and that is where the three copies of Tideline Dragon come in. Once we start Persona Rhyme, we're just giving something 10k. We give it to either our Tidal Salt or wherever we call out the Soul with our Vanguard's effect, which is most likely the Inlet Pulse. Typically, if we have both Tidal Assault and that card we call out to the with Maelstrom's effect, I prefer to give it to the Tidal Assault. That way, if my opponent checks defensive triggers, that one's still hitting really good numbers and really maximizing on that power gain. But if you don't have access to Tidal Assault, just give it to a card that's restanding because that still maximizes the power gain from it. And that is the main goal of this. Just maximize it, force my opponent to use as much guard as possible if they need to guard it. Though I will say one thing after talking through this that you might want to experiment with is if your opponent can take damage, maybe look at potentially giving it to one of the later attacks to maximize on that. that that's something to test that I really didn't test out, but I'll get more into that at the end of the video. But the point is, this card's here to give us power gain. Make sure you're maximizing by the unit you're choosing. It also itself gains 10k, and it's perfectly okay when you're trying to kill to just kind of overcall if you've got multiple in hand because you don't have the board spaces for it, but you do want that power. Only three copies because this card doesn't do anything until that turn four Persona Ride. So thus we got more time to find it. Hence why I run it at three copies. I think the other cards are a little more important. If you're enjoying this deck profile so far and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so you're notified when I do upload more content. With that, let's get back into this deck profile. So that's the key cards out of the way. Let's move over to what I've chosen for the flex slots here. And the first one here is four copies of Mythiarch Habitat. This is just a phenomenal consistency card that we can start using as soon as usually turn two. You can technically use it turn one, but there are so few grade ones in the deck and you don't want to be calling out triggers, obviously, that typically isn't worth it to use until turn two since we've got way more grade twos. But the idea being that we use this on turn two, we can call out a piece, just kind of further dig through the deck to find it. And then from there, we just use that piece to aggress. Then on turn four, because usually on turn three, we want to play the Judgment Maelstrom, but on turn four or later, we can also use this to fish for pieces to round out the board while also efficiently thinning the deck. That's one thing with this deck is I just want to make sure I have aggressive pieces. I can find my pieces as well, and Mythiarch Habitat does this. I've been experimenting with potentially using this card if I don't over the Judgment Maelstrom, if I don't have the Inlet Pulse on turn three just to dig for it a bit further, but uh, more testing needed on that as well. Just a thought I wanted to share with this card, but it just serves a crucial consistency piece for this deck I think it needed. And finally, that leaves us one more slot, and I run the Sea Rumble Brave Shooter. So this card's mostly here for that first effect, just a really efficient use of energy to draw an extra card. Normally this deck aims to use the Energy Blast 7 as soon as it can to draw a card, but after you use that, you do end up with excess energy to use, and this card can use that up. Typically we don't have the Counter Blast, but you technically can extra draw for discard for Ride deck, or if you guard it later on, really nice to have. Its second effect can come up if you need to loop back a specific piece from your drop, but that's very seldom. But do note that the second effect does help us do that. Now moving on to the staples. First off, we got the PGs. There's no reason not to run the three effect PG, one Blitz Elementaria Sanctitude split for this deck, so I just run that. And finally for the deck list, we've got the trigger lineup. Eight crit, three draw, four heal, one OT. I decided to go eight crit because this deck can't always get up to that damage threshold, the five damage to just overwhelm the opponent. So crit sometimes allows us to bridge that gap with our multi-attackers to still pressure lethal. On top of the fact, checking these early are great for pushing damage. I think this is really optimal. Front triggers don't really make sense in this deck. Sure, with the seven attack combo, you're getting three of those attacks usually after the Vanguard swing. 
so they could get the front trigger power but before that it just doesn't really make sense on your turn three when you're just trying to proc the inlet pulse and your vanguard's effect while conserving resources for that big turn you're not really you're not making use of the front trigger you're really whiffing it so i just found it to be better for pushing damage to prioritize the crits to push more damage and then the draws to dig into more pieces i also chose to just run the 5k crits because if i'm calling down pieces i want to maximize on power the soul in this deck doesn't really matter this you're trying to end the game as quickly as possible in this deck with the inlet pulses can generate enough soul to sustain what it's trying to do at least for a reasonable amount of turns and then for the heals uh you can change these out for whatever effect heal you find most appropriate for your locals for the general deck list i like to just throw in the 15 and i didn't find that i was leaning more, more towards one trigger or the other at least not yet in testing and then of course blessed is just a great card sure it's a front trigger esque effect doesn't benefit this deck as much but to be fair we're not really trying to op this card comes up so infrequently i see that as such a minor point when all the other things it does is just really really good that one minor minor uh nerf to the card doesn't make me want to look at any other ot i still think this does exactly what it needs to do when it does come up just because it's an omni trigger that's just good in general for the mulligan first thing prioritizing is just getting persona right this deck needs persona right to function on that turn four so you want to aggressively mulligan for it the second card to keep and mulligan for is the inlet pulse dragon because it is another key part this deck can function without finding it but it's a huge boost if it does so typically i like to even mulligan back any other pieces just to find that inlet pulse next up mythiar capta is just a great early game card if we haven't found the persona right typically i like to mulligan this back because we really need to find this and this card doesn't help us find it but if we have persona right even if we don't have an inlet pulse i think this is a fine keep as well and then finally the sea realm brave shooter i just keep this in general because it can convert into an extra card so mulliganing it back find another card is strictly worse than pitching this to then draw another card Moving over to other options with the deck, first I wanted to cover the what you can replace. Of course, the flex slots are up for grab, the four Mythiarch, as well as the 1C Rumble Brave Shooter. But I also think there is room to adjust the multi-attackers, specifically the Tidal Assault and the Flow Strike Brave Shooter. Generally don't want to touch Will Assault because it's such an efficient one, but maybe that's also all right. There is an argument to be able to do that because if you have excess copies, they don't necessarily stack all too well, especially the Wheel Assault and the Tidal Assault. But at the same time, there's such crucial pieces that I do like to max them out to try to find them. But something for you all to experiment with. As for the cards that you could swap in for those spots, well, first off, is actually a ride line deck, kind of going and against it, and that is the Ranker Chain in place of the Theo. The reason why to run Ranker Chain over this is because it helps us dig deeper into our deck to find our Persona Ride copy, something that Theo, oh, and also Inlet Pulse, something that Theo does not directly find us. And at that point, we'd also cut the Blue Storm Armadas, which also means that we're losing that power on the Flow Strike Brave Shooter. That's why I opted to keep those in over Ranker Chain, but I did want to make a note about Ranker Chain because it does work with this deck running orders if you keep in the Mythiarch Habitats and does technically help us with the consistency to find Persona Ride. Uh, next up, I could totally see trying to run a fourth copy of Tideline Dragon. The argument I made of you don't really need it until the late game, while true, it also can kind of apply to a lot of those pieces if you have them in excess where you're just kind of using them as beaters and tideline drawing does present a lot of pressure so i can definitely see an argument for bumping this up to four copies in place of probably like the sea rumble brave shooter especially since multiple copies of this card just mean we're hitting for even larger numbers when we get to that turn four speaking of sea rumble brave shooter i think there's also an argument if you want to keep the three tideline dragon but want to adjust some other ratios to bump this one up just a more efficient use of energy is always nice and we just forgo that energy blast seven instead use this guy typically i don't find the games last long enough to really justify it so of course you want to see it early on to be able to cycle but if you don't find it then and you end up drawing them into late then you're already used the energy blast seven and you don't really have the counter blast to use it so it does become a bit awkward but i guess you're also probably losing anyway so at that point it doesn't really matter it's just another option but uh it was definitely very much a flex card for me with how i was playing the deck that i could see just cutting or even increasing depending on your play style alternate to c roll brave shooter i've got the fajarmja right fajarm yeah i try to pronounce that so i should have zoomed in we'll zoom in here fajarmja here just another energy blast user the reason I could see running it is because it's a good early game piece to help boost some of your attacks. You can even throw it down on your first grade three turn going second to attack just to get in even more pressure. And then later on when you don't need it on board or if you end up discarding for ride deck, 
as you're discarding for stuff like Maelstrom's effect, you could always use its effect to and the energy you have to be able to return that card for hand. It's a nice little utility card that I could see maybe running at a one, maybe two copy of, but nothing really more just because its use cases kind of are uh, external to it, but another option nonetheless. And of course, the actual new support card from this set, the Merrick Blossom Dragon. So since this is a new support card, I will go over its effect. It says, when this card is discarded from your hand during your turn, if you have a Grade 3 or Greater Vanguard with Maelstrom in its card name, you can Energy Blast 2 to call this card to Rearguard Circle. So Great and Pairing with Maelstrom's first effect. Then, Continuous Rearguard Circle, Guardian Circle. If your Aura Zone has a Blue Star Armada, this unit can intercept from the back row and gets Power Plus 5,000, Shield Plus 10,000. Really, I really like this card. It is a solid option that looks like it synergizes well with Maelstrom. It plus it turns that um, minus or really it ends up being a minus with the maelstrom since it goes back to soul into actually a plus because you get it back or really break even that's a better way to look at it it's kind of a break even and if you combine it within the pulse then you're actually plussing it's a solid attacker with 15k and also has extra shield value that lets you intercept from the back row to help this deck gain a bit more heat to it so with all that why am i not running it if i think it's like a really good card like a cool card it's because i think it's the card itself in a vacuum is good, isn't as good in the deck itself. It doesn't really patch up any of the weaknesses that the deck needs it to. It's just kind of on cursory to it. And this deck has some pretty glaring issues I'll get into. So I'd rather run, use my slots to run cards that help patch those glaring weaknesses or help us, I guess, perform the deck's game plan a bit better. And this one doesn't quite do that, unfortunately. But it's still an option unless if you want to mess around with it. And finally, let's discuss Maelstrom in the context of this set's format. I'm going to put it bluntly, this has no chance of competing. Maelstrom is just unfortunately very out of date now and needs way more than just one additional card to be able to catch it back up. It really needs glory at this point, a new grade three for the deck. I've broken down the issues of this deck into quite a few points. Let's just kind of start going over them to start off with. The deck is very peace reliant and while this deck does have ways to dig for said pieces the peace reliant issue ends up showing up in a few ways the way that this deck has to recur or even dig for these pieces are very limited like we just have algos to dig for pieces and blue shore armada the blue shore armada judgment maelstrom to recur said pieces that's not enough to find all of them. There's just so many. And some of them, like the Flow Strike Brave Shooter, can't even be searched out. We have to hard draw it, which means this deck is very variance influenced. Some games you'll find all your pieces is great. Other games you will be missing a few and just kind of working off of uh, suboptimal combinations, which is a bit unfortunate when this deck is already weak. The second issue is it means that we're trying to fit a bunch of cards in deck and don't really have too much room to include cards that can help alleviate those issues. And this deck kind of lacks some coherency to make up for it in terms of its pieces. And that kind of ties back to only Algo search stuff out, Blue Storm Armada recurs. The next issue is lack of power gain before the Persona Ride turn. While the Persona Ride turn does give this deck access to quite a bit of power to push damage, the lack of power in the early game makes it hard to push the opponent to high damage totals to be able to really make use of that powerful turn four. It just ends up meaning that the opponent can either guard early or even just take those small pokes as they check defense triggers. A lot of times it shuts down that offensive pressure. And the lower damage it's at, that means the more high power attacks they can take in the early, the, not the early game, the late game, the more opportunities they have to check defensive triggers to make it way easier to guard. And it just puts this deck in, again, a very variance-based gameplay where sometimes it can just, if your opponent doesn't check defensive triggers, it can just push a lot of damage early, get to high damage and do exactly what it wants to do. But other games, it just your opponent's on like three damage when you're going to your persona right turn takes two attacks has a bunch of cards in hand to guard the rest since card decks kind of are getting a lot better at farming up cards in hand and this deck just can't do anything from there because that ties perfectly into the next point is that this deck doesn't really have the sustainability to go bass turn four while this deck does seemingly have a lot of draw power between inlet pulse and maelstrom's second effect a lot of times these are just refunding maelstrom's discard cost or we need to find the inlet pulses to be able to do that as well. And then on top of that, the whole multi-attack combo requires us to throw a bunch of cards down on board, meaning we're going a minus from hand just to build our board, 
without much draw, much search power, must plusing to be able to make up for it. Hence why I'm really focusing on that turn four. And finally, I think Maelstrom's just a really weak Vanguard, unfortunately. Decks just do what it does better now. Having to pay a discard to get out a card that can restand, but goes back into Soul at the end of turn is inherently a minus unless it's exactly Inlet Pulse, which helps replace itself. But even then, decks have a restand effect like that that is just better. It either lets you restand sooner, or it's more cost effective than a Counterblast and a discard. I get the theory behind this effect because it can be great utility because you're giving a unit with its own effects the restand ability, but there's nothing in support wave that takes advantage of that fact. Hence why we're just using Inlet Pulse to try to refund the cost. And then secondly, its second effect is a good effect. It is technically a plus two if you can retire something, but you also give your opponent a chance to clear the board with intercepting because it's on turn four, meaning sometimes it is just a plus one, and that frankly just isn't enough to justify this unit. One good skill doesn't make the Vanguard a very powerful tool. And it really ties it all together. It's just all these very conflicting issues coming together without too much remedy, too much cohesion to try to make up for it, the ultimate results in this deck feeling very fair to just underwhelming, unfortunately. But hopefully a glorious return for Maelstrom in a future set will allow it to at least see the light of day in the meta at some point. But now I want to hear from you all. What are you trying out on your Maelstrom list and why? If you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell so you're notified when I do upload more content. But with that being said though, look forward to more content coming out real soon.